Wheel of Time Season 2 is set to debut this week on Amazon Prime. Now, Season 1 was, to say the least, divisive. Some loved the adaptation, some readers hated it, but after the dust settled, it was one of the most successful shows that Amazon Prime has ever produced from a watch time and a total viewership perspective. But with the current Screen Actors Guilds and Writers Guild of America's strikes and the streaming shows being canceled left and right, it is a perilous time to make an expensive fantasy show. Season three has been renewed and is still filming as we speak, but season four and beyond are still up in the air. Today, join me as I break down five things that Amazon needs to get right with Wheel of Time season two for the show to make it into its later seasons. Now, before we dive into the content, please like the video if you enjoy the content and consider subscribing to the channel. I make only Wheel of Time related content here. And if you like that type of thing, consider subscribing. And as always, you can see the spoiler rating for the content here, but let's go ahead and dive in. One of my main criticisms from season one, whether there were excuses for it or not, was the poor visual effects. I can cite multiple examples of great special effects from season one, but on the whole, the visual effects were severely lacking for a project of this size. Wheel of Time and the huge immersive world and incredibly intricate magic system require boatloads of extremely well done special effects. Channeling is a great example of an area I think they dropped the ball in season one. The plain white weaves of the power were bland, basic, and they did not tell the story of how detailed of a magic system Robert Jordan wrote. We got no mention of the five powers. It wasn't clear if men or women could see each other's weaves, even if they said they couldn't. Additionally, when it was used for fighting, it was completely uninspiring. The scene in episode four when Logan's army attacks the Aes Sedai camp, the Aes Sedai just appeared to be making leaves blow up out of the ground rather rather than making channeling look badass. Episode eight was just rough all the way around, but the use of CGI rather than practical effects was just obvious for the Trollocs. Yes, this was due to COVID restrictions at the time and the number of extras were very, very limited on the set, but it was noticeably different than episode one where they had mixed practical effects and CGI and the Trollocs looked believable. So what do I wanna see change? Well, I want to see the five powers be different colors in the weaving. I want to see detail put into which colors or powers are used in different weaves, like healing. I want the CGI to help with the storytelling and help explain the world visually. And overall, I want it to look like people have come to expect in our Marvel world with all the crazy CGI. It doesn't need to be incredibly crazy, but it needs to be believable for the average person and look visually stunning. Now, the good news is, is that all of the trailers we've seen have made this appear like this has already happened. It looks like we're gonna get different colored weaves, but let's hope that the channeling looks as good as we want it. And then the other special effects, specifically the mix between practical and CGI effects, looks amazing. So one opinion I had with season one that I think some of the book fans out there may not have agreed with is I think for the most part that they nailed the casting for the show. They got great actors and actresses, and there were very few parts where I think they didn't have great performances in the roles. Where I did take issue though, and this wasn't across the board to be clear, was with the character development and character arcs for some of the characters. It's incredibly difficult to introduce characters from a book series where we got to be in their heads. We all have really high expectations of what they're gonna say and do because we got to live in their heads as we read the books. On screen, it's much more difficult to communicate what they're thinking, what their motivations are, and the reasons that they do the things they do. In season one, they made changes to some of the characters' backstories to help give motivation and the, the why for their actions. Some of these changes were positive, in my opinion, and some were not positive at all. Some I just completely disagree with. So, for example, Perrin being married and then killing his wife in the first episode was a highly controversial fridging incident, and it is not a change I agreed with. I understand what they were going for, but what it came from that was that Perrin was broody, boring, and depressing the whole season. And while you might argue that that's who Perrin is, I don't think it made him a particularly interesting character to watch, and it didn't really lead me to see him as the gentle giant that he's supposed to be, but more rather a depressed guy who obviously killed his wife. I don't think it succeeded in setting up his motivations, as I guess what I'm saying. So what do I want to see in season two? Well, we can't change the changes that were already made, not without killing the continuity. So what I want to see is a much better execution of 
of the character arcs and development for some of the characters in the show. Changes are fine to me. I know they come with the territory of making an adaptation. There are almost no adaptations that have not made significant changes to the story, but I want to care about the characters. I need to empathize with them. I need to watch them develop and grow, and the tension can't feel manufactured or fake. One of the strengths of early Game of Thrones, for example, was that the character motivations felt real and all of their choices had consequences. I want to see Wheel of Time succeed in developing strong, interesting, and fun to watch characters that I want to care about. And that doesn't just apply to the main characters, by the way. I want to see characters like Leandrin shine, and I want to have more than just surface level motivations. I mentioned before, I want to see the Forsaken be really fleshed out. I want to understand more about Paran Fane and see more of his story. And since we know the Sean Channer in this season, I want to see them played with some nuance. I don't want them to just be evil. Let's hope season two nails some of the character development and character arcs. So one of the biggest strengths of the Wheel of Time book series is just how massive and how developed the world is. Robert Jordan is known to be one of the very best world builders in literature, and the depth to which he created the world of the Wheel of Time has spawned multiple books talking about just that, an entire library of notes at the University of Charleston, and an immersive wiki dedicated to the lore of the world. Which led me to one of my biggest complaints about season one. The world just felt small. It didn't feel lived in. There weren't enough extras in the places that we saw as towns. We only got to see one real city, and we barely spent any time in it. And the White Tower, we barely got any time at all in and just saw a few rooms. So that massive, massive building, it felt like we were reusing the same set over and over and over again, which they were. So much of the season, in fact, felt as though it was just a group of adventurers traipsing around the woods or the wilderness. It never felt epic and it never felt massive to me. When we first got to the White Tower, we didn't get to see a grand entry area or the sheer interior size of the building. The camp scene with Loghain and the Aes Sedai felt small. It felt uninhabited. It was too small of a group to be transported a dangerous false dragon with an army coming to get him. The world of the show just felt small, and some areas felt too clean and not lived in. The clothing was too nice at times, and the streets were too empty. Again, much of this can be chalked up to the complete lack of extras due to COVID restrictions during filming, but that doesn't matter to me as a consumer. I care about the product I'm given, not the excuses for why it wasn't great. So for season two, they need to make the world bigger. They need to show more of the White Tower, make the building feel like the massive structure that it is. Tarvalon should feel populated, should feel massive. Other locations should feel distinctive and lived in. There should be more than a few locations that we see as well. I want to see us moving all over the place. Having more sets with the same amount of detail will make the world feel much, much bigger. There need to be more extras, more characters, and the world should feel more grimy, dirty, and authentic. Now, before moving on to the very next thing that Amazon needs to get right with season two, let me take a moment and thank the sponsor of the video, NordVPN. NordVPN is the world's number one provider of VPN services. VPNs protect you from nefarious people all over the internet that want to track your movements and potentially steal your information. They act as a third party between you and your service provider, and they encrypt your browsing history and allow you to show up to others as being in a different part of the world, meaning that you can watch content on Netflix or Amazon that's geolocked from a certain area. They are absolutely necessary if you travel, use online banking, or you just want to keep companies from gathering your data. Now, the good news is VPNs are really cheap. The better news is, is that they're even cheaper if you use my code. Check the link in the description of the video and grab your NordVPN subscription and help support the channel and the content at the same time. Now, let's get back to the video. Look, I know most people that have read the books want to see an almost identical adaptation of the books to the screen. I'm one of those people. I love the books. I've read them more times than I can count or remember. I'm on a constant reread and I love the characters, love the magic system, and I love the world. I want to see the story I visualized in my head reflected on the screen. But the reality of television adaptations is simply that changes are required through the change of mediums. Not everything translates as well to the screen as it does on the page. Ageless faces, color changing cloaks, funny swear words, all of these things work in the books, but they would be a major struggle for the screen. They have to show things people think in the books, some of those things are limited by budget. Some of them are limited by the fact that they have to figure out how to condense 15 books into five to seven seasons. All of these things mean that we're going to see changes to the story, the characters, and the world, whether we want it or not. I know it has to happen. Any adaptation ever made will have that happen. It's not going to change with another showrunner, 
with another studio or even a bigger budget. But here is what I think we can and should expect that I don't always think was done properly in season one. We should expect the changes that are made to be meaningful, done with purpose, and done to further the overall arc of the story. They should make sense within the lore of the world, and they should, above all, drive character arcs and development. Now, there were a lot of changes in season one that did exactly those things. I particularly enjoyed the changes to how Tom Marilyn was introduced in his story, as brief as it was. I thought the change to the age of the characters was a good choice as well. To have Rand and Egwene have a relationship was a good choice, rather than just having them kind of fake betrothed like the books. The aforementioned changes to Perrin's character arc and Matt's were problematic for me. The focus on the Steppen story, while not a bad story arc, and it was certainly not poorly told, it was meant to show us the loss that happens when a warder loses his eyes to die, but that payoff hasn't happened yet. But it took the better part of an entire episode and lots of other plot lines that were being cut to give us that. I'm not sure that qualifies as a worthwhile change to me as something that didn't even pay off that season. So while I know that changes are coming, the story was great as it was written. Rafe said their goal was to keep the heart of the story intact, and by and large, I think they did that, but not as well as I would have wanted. So in season two, I really want to see the changes to the plot mean something for the greater story arc. I want them to make sense, have purpose, have payoffs that matter, and drive character growth. So let's hope that we get that in season two. The last thing on my list, and possibly the most important for the future of the show, is the need to pull in new viewers. At this point, those that have read the books are firmly in two camps. Those that have lost interest or have no interest in the show because of the changes, and those that love it. The book readers are likely already going to watch it or already not going to watch it. For Amazon to feel like the show is a success and to feel like greenlighting season four, the show has to gain some positive buzz and pull in those who have not read the books. That means that the story's compelling and the show makes the jump to water cooler talk status uh, at work. People need to tell each other to go check it out and talk about the latest episode. And more importantly, Amazon needs to get some new subscribers to Prime that watch the show. Now, the way they get there is to make quality television. Non-book readers don't care about changes. They don't care about them at all, frankly. What they care about is, is the story good? Do I want to keep watching? Am I going to watch it again? I, I want that too. I also want more people to become fans of the story and then in turn become fans of the book because that's what I love even more. Those are my five things that Amazon needs to get right. What do you think about these five? Do you agree with me? Is there anything I missed? Let me know in the comments of the video. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more Wheel of Time content as season two drops later this week. Huge thank you to my patrons for your support. This type of content is never going to get huge and make money, so you all make it worth it. Thank you for your support. If you wish to become a patron, check out the link in the description of the video and check out the things there. And lastly, if you like this video, check out one of these videos here that you also might like. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace out.